Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Paleoettes and today we're talking about Goyim. Um, and everyone, even if you're in Eretz Israel, has to deal with Goyim, but especially if you're in the diaspora, the ratio of Jews to Goyim, you know, we are in the minority. So this is this chapter is going to have very good advice. I think not only for dealing with Goyim, I think, believe it or not, I think this advice is good for everyone that you deal with. Um, whether they're Jewish or they're not Jewish, um, it is very good. You know, I think these are things, this is like basic Derek Eretz that we just, we tend, for whatever reason, get caught up in our own egos and our own uh, self-importance or what we perceive to be our self-importance. This chapter really does give very good practical advice and I really love the rub for having uh, included this advice, advice because it, it really, it's so practical. There's no other way to say it. It's very practical. And it's really something that everyone, no matter where you, no matter where you're holding in your observance, uh, no matter how you see yourself, whether it's unaffiliated, you know, reform, a conservative, um, orthodox, you know, whatever it is, this is just basic Derek Eretz. And I think it's good and sound advice. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. And it says, our sages in, in the Talmud, Yerushalmi, and the end of Perak 8 said, one needs to be careful not to uh, anger even a Gentile child because their anger is eternal. And when they grow up, they will seek revenge. The Yerushalmi relates a story of a pig shepherd who was beaten by Jews and later became a king. Um, so you can imagine, uh, you can imagine, now they, you know, this happened to this pig shepherd and when he came in power, what was the what was the chance? How much do you want to bet that any time a Jew came in front of him to ask for anything, that that petition was granted? Um, you know, so we have to be careful. It, it almost seems like, you know, we do something and we think it's just us and, and that in between that person. But really, I don't know what it is, especially with Jewish people. Whenever someone, um, you know, does something, especially to an, another non-Jew, they really will seek revenge and, and they will remember it. And it's not just you they will look for revenge, but it's all of Am Yisrael that they seek revenge uh, against. So whether you have signed up for the job or not, the mere fact that you are Jewish, you are an ambassador for Hashem, and people are looking uh, to, at your behavior and how you treat other people. So it says, if not for the fact that the Rebbe and Yehoshua had bestowed upon him kindness, he would have wanted to wreak total destruction. A person only also needs to be concerned, even if the Gentile is incapable of doing anything, lest the non-Jew and some of his friends find him alone in the middle of the night or the road and place him in danger. Um, so, you know, again, maybe he won't. The, the chances are, statistically, he's not going to become a king. Most people that you upset are not going to become kings. However, that doesn't mean that they won't find you in a dark alley. Again, we have to be very careful. So it says, therefore, it is not good to argue with a Gentile, even a disheveled and repulsive adolescent, for one doesn't know what each day may bring. Um, and again, we know this because Hashem alone, he causes somebody's prestige to rise and to fall. And we don't know from one day to the next. We don't know what this person is destined to become. So it says, if one does so, he violates the prohibition and you shall exceedingly guard your life. As uh, quoted in Devarim 4.15, it is not good, even if he just causes a curse upon himself, Behold, our sages notice in Baba Kama 93a, the curse of a common person should not be insignificant in your eyes, as we wrote above in the entry in Baracha. Um, you know, I think, again, sometimes we see somebody, and again, in our generation, this is very prevalent, where we judge people based upon their appearances. We think these people may be lowlifes, uh, you know, so what, what can they possibly do and how can they inflict harm for us? But the truth is, how many enemies does it take to take you down? And the truth is, it only takes one. Um, and for sure, you know, they may look like a common person. Again, we don't know who this person's destined to become. We don't know who this person is. But even if they weren't destined to become anything great, even if they are not anyone of, of great uh, status, the point is, you don't know what status they have with the Shem. So you have to be very careful. You never know. We that's the I think that's the whole point. We never know. We think we know. We don't know. But it continues on. It says, on the contrary, a person should be the first to address every person, even a Gentile in the marketplace. If he achieves fi financial success, he should extend a formal gift from time to time to Gentiles in order to fulfill Kohelet 11.1, send your bread upon the waters, 
for the course of your time, you will discover it. Um, and it's true. You know, there was a story. I can't, I think, I think, I'm not sure. I'm not even, I think it was uh, Rabbi Mansour. But he said a great story one time. And he had said something that, you know, there was a Jew, uh, a Jewish guy. Who was uh, I don't know if he was a rabbi. Again, I'm paraphrasing this story. And he was saying how every day he would greet this guy. He was a common guy, um, you know. Didn't look like he was much or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But every day he would greet him. Every day he would be the first to greet him. And so later on, uh, that guy had turned out, uh, he was like promoted to some kind, I don't know if he was like the chief of police or whatever it was. And he was promoted to some kind of um, position of power. And one day, you know, a guy who had not uh, been so favorable with the Jews went and accused him of a very serious crime, and I forgot what it was, uh, and, and I, hospital, I don't know if it was like murder or something, it was a very serious crime, um, and when they brought the rabbi in front of the now chief of police, he said, he like refused to bring charges, and he's stating that no one that will come and greet you every day would be capable of such a thing, so you see what I mean, this is, this costed this rabbi nothing to do, just to follow this advice, and it reaped him, you know, great rewards, and again, I'm paraphrasing the story, but it is a true story. Uh, and we have seen this time and time again where the kind, the simple act of kindness is remembered. People do remember this. They do, you know, there's one thing, there's one thing I can say, two things that people remember. How you treated them uh, when they were on the way up and how you treated them when they were on the way down. Those things, like, people really do remember. So it continues on, it says, if he achieves financial success... He should extend a formal uh, from time to time to Gentiles in order to fulfill Kohelet 11.1. 1. And I apologize, I think I read that already. So it says, um, the people who are close to the government need to be especially careful to bestow kindness upon all Gentiles, for they have many enemies due to jealousy, and their eyes are darkened by seeing Jews in position of greatness and power. If he treats them badly in his official capacity, their anger will be unending and they will bear grudge and seek revenge like a snake waiting for the day when he leaves office. Um, there is no man who does not have his hour of success, but these situations, it says in Kohelet 7.14, on the day of good, be good, and on the day of evil, beware. Um, I just have to say, you know, this statement here, um, very true. For all those who are in Spain and know the Spanish, uh, you know, the history of the Spanish Inquisition, all that, you know, when a lot of, you know, my family included became like the new conversos, there were a lot of non-Jews who were for sure, 100% for sure jealous of their um, new status, the fact that they were getting, um, you know, they were rising in prestige and in prominence. And um, as you can see, you know, we suffered a, a, a very heavy price for that. And I think that the lesson that we took away from that, um, it's funny, like, one of the big things that you don't flaunt wealth is another thing you don't flaunt wealth in front of the goyim. And part of it is because of this jealousy and this anger. And that was one of the biggest takeaways that we did. Also, like, this, this, this chesed that, that, you know, by the time... They had gotten to Puerto Rico and, and you know, Spain had already seceded, uh, you know, the islands. And I believe it was, um, you know, they lost the Philippines and Puerto Rico. And I think Cuba went on its own way. Um, you know, it was funny. They had already gained a reputation by that point of being people of such chesed. And it turned out in their favor because now, you know, the Spaniards on the island of Puerto Rico were treating the native people there so brutally i can't eat i cannot even tell you like how brutal their treatment was but my family had gained a, a reputation of kindness and generosity and to this day they have enjoyed um, a good relationship uh, with people who were native to that land so it really paid back and and it wasn't so kind it wasn't such a warm and friendly place if anyone from spain would have stood behind um, and, and had not exhibited this, um, 
this kindness because now you see where this where Spanish people were up on top now they were really like on on the bottom so this really worked out in their favor and this really and this is I mean this is every day we don't know it, it, I mean break it down even for a simpler in your job you know the person that you think you know is just one of is just like me you know or, or started and this happens like more now I think than ever but started after me so I'm on I've got seniority over this person. That person somehow gets promoted over you. And we see this. So you have to always be kind to everyone. Um, and part of that means, I think the biggest lesson for me is just like stay in your own lane. Like don't get overly involved in people's affairs. Uh, don't be overly opinionated about what people are saying. Um, you know, you really have to be diplomatic when you're dealing with people, um, with anyone really. So we're going to close up and it says, how shall a Jewish man find favor so that everyone will like him? Seek his good and support him in his time of need. Um, he must perform acts of kindness and bestow gifts upon all Gentiles for a bribe will blind their eyes. And it says, a wise man already said, hundreds of thousands of friends should not be too many in your eyes, nor should one enemy be too few. Um, for one foe can slay the king. Uh, so this is true. I just mentioned this. How many enemies does it take to bring down the king? Only one. Only one. It only takes one person to bring you down. Uh, so one person is one too many. Okay. So it says, therefore, one who guards his soul should seek the peace of every Gentile, adult and child. Even if the non-Jew hit him, shamed him or stole from him, he should bend his head and forbear for the sake of atonement. And Hashem told him to curse. And it says at that same, t at that same moment, he should make a blessing upon the evil with great joy. Uh, blessed is, uh, um, you know, Baruchat Hashem who has not made me a Gentile. And I have already written that God considers exile for the good. Um, so remember, if you remember, I think, I don't know if it was, uh, I think it was one of the last two or three shirim that I put out on Paleoettes and I had said about the Segula, that if someone shames you or, or does something like that, uh, which I think in this day and age, perhaps, you know, embarrassment is probably one of the, the more common things that will happen. And if you stay silent, you know, you go, you make a bracha, you, you, at that point you can, Give your petition to Hashem, um, and this could—it's been reported time and time again how people have seen great miracles after after seeing, um, you know, this play out. I guess the trick is to get that in your head at the time that it's happening, because at the time it's happening, you may have other thoughts of how you want this to end, and it's not going to end with your silence. So if you can really put a control on that you really could see a great thing come out of this. But it continues on, it says, whatever valley the Gentiles consume, he should treat as charity, as is written in Yeshayahu 60.17, and those who op oppress you, I will consider it as charity. Uh, this matter depends upon the nature of a person and to the degree to which one needs to be concerned, but even a remote possibility. For if we allow them to consume our, our wealth, anyone who is hungry will come and eat. And what will he have left. Rather, every wise man must conduct himself with intelligence, and he should run away from arguing with a non-Jew to the best of his ability. He should plead for compassion that God should save him uh, from an evil man, and he should love and pursue peace, and he should increase the number of his friends. By doing so, we will survive among the Gentiles until our Maker has pity on us, breaks the yoke of our exile from upon our necks, and we, Israel, will dwell in security upon our land and the inheritance of our fathers. So may it be and it speedily in our days. Amen Yehiratzon. So again, very practical advice uh, to the day to day. You know, um, just to go back when he was saying, you know, if they oppress you, just count it as, uh, you know, like tzedakah. Uh, you know, somebody, you know, a rabbi once told me, and, and since he told me this, I really, this has been like where it's been my um, biggest arena. But he said, even if somebody cuts you off on the road, don't you know i think there was a time i probably would have had well first of all years ago for sure if you would have cut me off on the road there would have been a lot of hand gestures and there would have been a lot of vocal gestures that you could hear from my car to yours no problem thank god that i worked a lot on that um but i think you know sometimes you get like that you know when somebody cuts you off and all, all of a sudden you're ready to react even if it's not in like you know hand, but you you've got this reaction and lately i find myself um, saying, I'm going to do this as it's a chesed. It was a free chesed I just did. It didn't cost me anything. And he's one car in front of me. I'm, it's not like what he's doing. 
it, you know, him coming before me is going to make me that much earlier or that much later. So I consider it a chesed. Same thing if somebody cuts you off in a line or whatever, you know, let it go. Let it go. Keep going. Um, but I do find my blood pressure is so much better these days. And I wonder why. Um, so again, practical advice. Uh, I think this is one of the chapters that really, really just is so relevant for our time. Um, and you'd be surprised. This seems like such a little thing. It makes a huge difference in your overall happiness. Uh, I think, you know, the saying goes, pick and choose your battles. And this is a place where you really, you know, there's a lot of things I think we can let go. Um, we don't have to be people who are just so much ready to, you know, take the belt and pound somebody. And I mean that figuratively, but um, we have to learn to just to take a deep breath. Everything's in Hashem's hands. Um, and we really can, you know, make a difference in this part of our midot. So if you're somebody who really suffers with this uh, the way I did, for sure, um, you're going to have great success in this. It, again, some days we'll make it, some days we won't. Um, and your failure today doesn't mean it'll be a failure tomorrow. Just like your success today won't mean it's a success tomorrow. Everything is day by day. But I think, you know, the more that we keep putting these thoughts and ideas into our head and implementing them, we will see changes um, and it will make a difference in the way we feel and the way we see our lives and the way we look at the world. Uh, so that's it for today. And I hope we'll all be together again soon. Besarat Hashem.